Good morning. I'm Patrick Ng, a fourth year medical student at Harvard Medical School. Thank you for the opportunity to present at the 8th International Symposium on Focus Ultrasound. I'm pleased to present work that is being conducted primarily at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School with collaborators at CHU de Bordeaux and the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School. The title of my talk is Volumetric and Topographic Analysis of Lesion and Edema Formation in MR-Guided Focus Ultrasound Thalamotomy for a Central Tremor Treat, Relationships with Sonication Parameters and Adverse Events. I have no disclosures. Focus Ultrasound Thalamotomy offers dramatic outcomes for patients living with medically refractory essential tremor. This is one of Dr. Reese Cosgrove's recent patients, pre-op on the left and post-op on the right. The ventral intermediate nucleus of the thalamus, or VIM, is commonly targeted for essential tremor. Most surgeons use indirect stereotactic targeting, utilizing the anterior commissure and posterior commissure to locate the VIM. While indirect stereotactic targeting has stood the test of time, adverse events and non-durable outcomes can still occur if the lesion is not perfectly placed. So our main research questions are, what lesion size and location would maximize efficacy and minimize morbidity? And is there an alternative to indirect stereotactic targeting to achieve this outcome? To answer these questions, we conducted a voxel-based analysis of lesion and edema generated by FUS thalamotomy, investigated associations with sonication parameters and acute adverse events, and identified lesion volumes and locations that minimize adverse events. Our cohort included 125 essential tremor patients treated by Dr. Reese Cosgrove at Brigham and Women's Hospital. We collected T2-weighted MR images 24 hours post-treatment for all patients. We then used a web-based platform called SPINE developed by Dr. Charles Gutman's group to outline lesion and edema. A paper by Wintermark et al. established the radiographic features of FUS. In short, on T2-weighted imaging, there are commonly three zones created by FUS sonications. For our purposes, lesion was defined as Wintermark zones one and two, and edema was defined as Wintermark zone three. Here's an example of a full segmentation for a patient, lesion in red, edema in blue. Moving on to results. This graph shows lesion and edema volumes for all patients. The mean lesion volume was about 364 cubic millimeters and the mean edema volume was about 1,696 cubic millimeters. We found a significant positive correlation between lesion and edema volumes. Next, we correlated lesion and edema volumes with eight sonication parameters. We found a significant positive correlation between lesion volume and skull density ratio, thermal dose, max temperature, and max duration, and a significant negative correlation between lesion volume and sonication number. Thermal dose was the strongest correlate of lesion volume. We also found a significant positive correlation between edema volume and max power. We also analyzed lesion and edema volumes with respect to eight adverse events. While median lesion and edema volumes were all larger for patients with adverse events, median lesion volume was significantly larger for patients with acute dysarthria and acute imbalance. A novel finding was that median edema volume was significantly larger for patients with acute imbalance. In addition to analyzing lesion and edema volumes, we investigated lesion location with frequency maps or heat maps. First, we took segmentations of our 125 patients and transformed them into MNI space, which is a standardized atlas space. We then aggregated patients with and without adverse events into two separate frequency maps. Finally, we did a simple difference between these two frequency maps to identify the voxels contributing to adverse events. Qualitatively, lesions that caused motor deficits were more inferior and lateral, sensory deficits more posterior, dysarthria more superior and medial, and imbalance more inferior. These findings suggest that motor deficits and imbalance may involve the internal capsule. Sensory deficits may involve 
the ventral posterior and ventral medial nuclei, then dysarthria may involve the ventral medial nucleus. Our next steps include statistical analysis of our frequency maps, frequency maps of edema, correlations of lesion and edema volumes with treatment efficacy, and overlaps of our frequency maps with thalamic nuclei segmentations and white matter tracks to confirm which structures are involved in adverse events and positive outcomes. Our group is also planning a prospective trial comparing indirect stereotactic targeting and direct targeting based on preoperative thalamic nuclei segmentations. This trial will inform our long-term goal of assessing the safety and efficacy of preoperative white matter null MRI for personalized FUS targeting. So in conclusion, voxel-based analysis enabled correlations of lesion and edema volumes with sonication parameters and acute adverse events. Thermal dose was the strongest correlate of lesion volume. Lesion volume was significantly larger for patients with acute dysarthria and imbalance. And edema volume was significantly larger for patients with acute imbalance. Qualitatively, lesions that caused motor deficits and imbalance may involve the internal capsule. Sensory deficits may involve the ventral posterior and ventral medial nuclei. And dysarthria may involve the ventral medial nucleus. I'd like to thank Dr. Reese Cosgrove. Dr. Charles Gutman, their research groups, our collaborators, and the FUS Foundation. Thank you.